Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, you can all see my screen okay and hear me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, always like to check. Uh, yeah, so welcome, welcome. Uh, London Excel Meetup for March 2021. Uh, we've got Rene here, as uh, as you know, and for those who've been in here a while, we've been, we've been chatting. Uh, so we'll get to that pretty swiftly. You know, I don't like to spend too much time on all all this waffle, I want to get to the Excel bits. But usual stuff, just starting to let you know about some of the upcoming events, uh, if, if you weren't aware already. Uh, so next up, doing one a month at the moment. Um, you know, hopefully when we go back to the, the real thing, uh, we may do two a month, but it's all, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but it's one a month at the moment. Uh, so next month, Thursday the 8th, uh, usual time of six o'clock for all of them at the moment. Uh, apologies for those who like the lunchtime kickoffs. Uh, but we've got DAX, and I don't think we've really had any DAX presentations. There was one in London in February last year uh, before we did the online. So obviously only a few of you on this call would have been here for that. But I don't think we've really delved into that. So it's something quite new in respect to this meetup. Um, so if you are brand new to DAX, if you've never touched it or you've only done some basics, you know, try not to be too put off. You know, it's always good just to meet up, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm sure you'll pick up some uh, bits and pieces along the way. But we've got Chandeep uh, Chabra uh, coming in to present on that. Uh, month after, we've got my friend Anne coming in, Anne Walsh. And we're back to some formulas, but not DAX formulas. Back to the worksheet ones uh, with the IFS family. Uh, so your sum ifs, count ifs, average ifs, all those guys. Uh, it's always useful, you know, compared to DAX. I, I guess it's a lot more regular. And most of you here will have, you know, uh, some familiarity with those. But once again, I'm sure there's always stuff we can pick up uh, on these presentations. And being Anne, it will probably be a bit of a giggle as well. Um, then in June, you know, that, that was released a few days ago, wasn't it? This week, I put that out. Uh, we have George Mount coming in uh, to do advancing into analytics. Uh, this is all because George's got a book coming out, which I think comes out in June, I think. Uh, might not be right on that. Um, so it's all kind of part of that. There'll be an element of his book there. Uh, but it should be pretty interesting as well. Once again, it's something different for those of you who are regulars at these meetups uh, because it will be using Excel for analytics but there'll be some kind of emphasis on other tools, uh, if you call them tools, uh, the likes of Python and R, which I'm sure a lot of us have probably not touched or, or not done too much in. Uh, you know, Excel folk don't generally get too involved with that stuff. Um, so it should be quite interesting. I know George is going to talk on the day about, you know, how can an Excel person dip their toes into that area? How can someone from an Excel background, start learning something like Python or like R and start incorporating it into their analytics. Uh, so I think that should be a good insight for a lot of us, I guess, similar to the kind of office scripts last year, you know, kind of seeing what else is out there and how we, how can we get started with that stuff? Uh, so that's what's coming all six o'clock, one a month, uh, sign up for those. They're all in the London Excel meetup group. I should put a couple of links in that chat as soon as I'm done here for that stuff. I think we might have some people on the meetup here that have come through other avenues. Uh, maybe their first one at this, this meetup group. And on that note, another slide that's quite normal for those of you who are with me a lot. Uh, feel free to not listen to me. I'm waiting for Rene. Uh, but usual stuff to mention. Uh, we are live on YouTube at the moment and it's being recorded there as well. Uh, I'll put the link in the, the chat in a moment to that and this tail bits me to it. Um, so yeah, we are live there and the link will be there. The link is on the meetup description as well. So if you pop over to London Excel meetup group, there's a link there. So you have, if you have to leave at any point or if you want to watch it back uh, with the ability to obviously play things back and go through Rene stuff, um, you know, with the chance to pause it and try things out a bit easier, then it is all recorded. It's always a, a common question. Thanks, Taya. I see it go in the chat there. Um, what else do I normally say? Uh, yes, there will be a follow-up email, which I'll probably send tomorrow. Um, 
you know, just to thank everybody. And I'll provide that link to the YouTube video again. And also, uh, Rene has kindly provided some, uh, some documentation as well, which I think he's going to show you how to access that on his website. But I'll make sure I put the link in that follow-up email too, tomorrow. Probably tomorrow I'll send it. Um, yes, on there, the message, the email will only go to those who have RSVP'd to this meetup. So I know you can attend it without RSVPing. Um, and you have to RSVP at the London XL Meetup page. I know it's being co-promoted elsewhere. Uh, so if you haven't done that, we'll put a link in the chat. Make sure you do that if you want this follow-up email, because if you don't, you won't get it, because uh, that's who it's going to go to. There was also an email that went out today, uh, which once again, I think Renee's about to share it, but we did send a message out today. Or when I say we, Taya did it. Um, <laughs> which had a link to an Excel workbook, which Renee is going to work through. So you know, keep that to hand if you want to go through stuff with him. Uh, alternatively, um, do what I'm going to do, which is just uh, sit and watch <laughs> the magic happen. And on that note, RSVP is Ronde s'il vous plaît. We like to do a lot of French in the UK as well. <laughs> um, on that note, I'm going to stop my share and Hand over to uh, Rene. I stop my share. Are you okay and ready, buddy? So, can you see my screen? Can you hear me? Yes. Nice. Yes, both Rene. That's yes. So, hi everybody, <laughs> really large audience. I never had such a large audience. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> and before we start, I'd like to, ma um, I'd like to make some comments about um, my presentation. I'd like to introduce myself and then uh, I start with Excel first. Um, you're almost 100 persons. So I think the best idea is first listen to me. And if you have questions or want to make comments or whatever, uh, do it at the end. We have enough time for discussion or for questions or whatever. Um, I'd like to talk about 45 minutes, maybe five minutes longer. <laughs> I do not want to exaggerate. Uh, I hope I'll be in time uh, more or less in one hour. Uh, that's my time. Um, as you can see here, concerning my presentation, I changed the surface to English. So I have the English ribbon and the English formula, sum and so on. Um, but I left in the control panel, where's my control panel? I left uh, in the control panel a German uh, word version uh, because I cannot talk and think and <laughs> show whatever and type for example the US American way so I will type a uh, 12 euro and comma 55 cent but I think everybody will understand that <laughs> so that's the Absolutely. mixture of English and German you see um, the next hour um, as Alan mentioned, um, he will send my file. I will show, I will use, and I have a paper. I have a documentation about that. Uh, that's it. I wrote it in English and also in German. If you want, if you <laughs> cannot wait until Alan will uh, send it to everybody, you can um, take it from my homepage. Um, that's Compurem, like computer, martin.de, Germany. And there you find it on texts, downloads. Um, first one is in English and the second one in German. Um, just two files. Um, you find it also here as you want to. So um, what else to mention? Uh, the language. Well, the language, I do not apologize for my horrible English. <laughs> uh, I think you can understand me. Uh, tomorrow I will talk in German. That's a very nicer, uh, very better uh, language for me. And some of you guys have to continue with that horrible English tomorrow. So let's talk in English. Let's talk about my person. Who am I? Mm. First of all, first before I start, thanks to Alan. We met two years ago in Sofia in Bulgaria on the International Excel Days. Um, over there, that's me. <laughs> See that? Um, somewhere Alan is sitting here. Don't know where it is. <laughs> um, and thanks for the invitation. It's, um, it's 
very, <laughs> I'm very proud about it. Um, some words about my person. I live in Munich. Munich is in Bavaria and Germany. You see it here. I'm originally not from uh, Munich, but from another city um, from Germany. Um, if you haven't been uh, to our wonderful Bavaria, just come here, maybe after Corona, it's better. We really have nice landscape, a nice city, uh, some friendly peoples, well, <laughs> only some, or oh, better, we try to be friendly to the foreigners, not all the time. Um, as I'm not from here, the Aborigines from Bavaria force me to drink a lot of beer and to wear leather trousers and dance uh, strange dances. I try to do, I try to do my best. And during the rest of the time, I'm teaching. I'm teaching computer stuff, um, for example, Excel <laughs> and also other stuff like VBA. Um, I wanted to become a teacher at school, but I found out uh, that uh, children are horrible monsters. They spit and shout and behave so badly. So that's the reason why I teach grown ups. Besides of teaching, I'm also writing programs and I'd like to show you some of my programs written in VBA um, during the next hour. And besides of teaching and programming, I'm also writing uh, what to do in the evenings. Evenings are so boring. Um, some of my books, I write articles for newspapers and so on. And sometimes I do videos for LinkedIn. In former times, the name was uh, Video to Brain. Here you can see it. Um, it's very funny. If you have um, a subscription for, uh, for LinkedIn, uh, you can see some of my videos for Excel, VBA and other stuff um, on the German part, of course. Um, they are in German, not in English. Uh, outside my profession, I'm always looking whether there's a life outside Excel. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and that's the reason why I organize all the meetup. We have it here in Munich and as, in, as Alan in London. We normally meet in a restaurant close to the central station of Munich. If you live in Munich or close to Munich, uh, just feel free to write me an email if you want to come. And due to Corona, um, we also organize our uh, meetups online. The next will be next week on 16th. So if you're interested, and I'm sorry, we're talking German. If you understand German and if you're interested, just write me an email. Uh, Frank organizes the next one and I will organize the next on 12th of April. Um, I think we have to meet online <laughs> once again. Maybe we can meet um, in May in mm, together in our wonderful restaurant. That was an article in a newspaper about our Excel meetup. <laughs> Very nice person wrote about me, about our little bit strange <laughs> Excel meetup. Well, besides that, I'm, um, I have a blog. Mm -hmm you know all these wonderful blogs about excel tips and tricks and how to do and best way and greatest shortcuts and so on so i decided to write a blog about the dark side of excel i think everybody understands excel is nerving i collect bugs i collect strange translations from english to german i collect um well in this corner, you do it like that. In another corner, like that. That's not very consequent and stuff like that. And I collect mistakes from human beings. Sometimes there are more mistakes a person do than Excel does. I have more than 1,500 articles and I really uh, write almost every day an article about that. Um, nowadays, people send me, oh, I have a problem. Do you know that bug? There's something not working correctly. So I publish <laughs> all that stuff. That's my hobby. Besides of Excel, as I told you, I am always looking whether there's life outside Excel. I'm not quite sure. In normal times, you can find me quite often at the cinema, two or three times a week normally. Besides of cinema, also at the opera or exhibition theaters where ever. <laughs> Sometimes I'm riding my bike or my motorbike. Um, Bavaria is really very nice. Europe is nice. Germany is nice and the world also. You can see some other hobbies of <laughs> me. And um, traveling is also one of the hobbies. Maybe I come to your country and looking if, uh, if you have an Excel meetup there. And if not, we can just <laughs> drink a glass of wine or beer together. 
Well, that's about my person. And I stopped talking about myself. I'd like to talk about Excel first. Uh, everybody of you knows, uh, if you enter a value in a cell, you see the value here in the formula bar. But if you format that cell with a um, font, with a font size, bold, background color, and so on, there may be a difference between the format and the value inside. These are two levels. Are these really two levels, two independent levels? I will show you um, in the next minutes if they are or if they are not. I think everybody of you knows if you enter a value, like for example, 42, if you write, for example, an answer, text is displayed in our cultures, in our writings from left to right. It's aligned to the left side. Numbers are aligned to the right side. So Excel makes a distinction between text and numbers. If you insert true or false, it's in the middle of the cell. So you have three or four or five, <laughs> it depends on your, how you count, uh, different uh, types of values inside. If you don't believe it in formulas, in more functions, information, you find find the function is logical. True is a logical, is a Boolean value. You have here is text. The answer is text and is number. 42 is a number that will be true. Well, typing numbers, that's my main subject. I will also talk about uh, text. Typing numbers um, has limitations. Um, you may know them. They have limits of 15. If I write a long number with a lot of digits like that, for example, pressing enter and formatting it back from home uh, to a number. <laughs> enlarge, enlarge it. You see some of the um, digits are missing because Excel only allows you 15 digits. You have the same after the decimal separator here in Germany, we use comma, as I told you, if I write more than 15, uh, Excel only leaves 15 inside, the rest is deleted. And also in total, if I write 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, comma, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, Excel tells me, no, sorry, only 15, you enter 20 digits, that's too much. I will delete some of them, <laughs> as you can see here, uh, only 15 are allowed. Quite interesting, some weeks ago I got an email, excuse me, I have uh, time information. And with some of the information I cannot calculate. For example, the amount of hours our machines or our employees work, 2000 it works. For example, if I write 2000 hours and double point 30 minutes, enter. But if I write 20,000 hours and 30 minutes, it's left in um, aligned. That means that is text. I cannot calculate with that uh, value. So I have to take out um, the information before the double point for to calculate with hours. I found it quite interesting. I didn't know that there's also limitation for hours. And on a Microsoft page, uh, you find the Excel specification. Um, you'll get the link. The largest amount of time that can be entered are 9,000 hours. So less than 10,000 hours are allowed. And I think everybody, if you know uh, the date, the maximum date is the year 9,000 after that is finished. Uh, I didn't know that there's also a limitation for, um, for hours. For date, uh, you may know uh, if you have the 12th of October or 1492, Excel tells me, no, sorry, that is not a date. I start in 1900, the 1st of 19 of 00. That is a date you see on the right side. It's converted. And the end is the year 9000. <laughs> I think I don't need it. Um, but sometimes I need um, information before 1900 but that's not possible. So these are the limits of um, Excel. And typing numbers, I often get the question, excuse me, what is the difference between general and number? If I type, um, for example, one, two, comma, three, four, enter, and I format this general formatted cell to number, 
nothing happens. Well, there are small differences between general and number. <clears throat> um, if I have a lot of digits after comma, in general, um, everything will be taken. But if I format it to number, number has a fixed amount of uh, numbers after the comma. Of course, I can enlarge it or uh, do less. Mm, but they're always fixed. So for example, if I type um, two euro 50 cents, okay, it will be it leaves, but uh, two euro 50 in general, enter. Um, Excel tells me, no, there's no need for more digits. Also with long numbers, if I write a number like that, okay, Excel converts it automatically from general to the scientific way of uh, writing. But if I format, if I use the number format, long number, it's left, it's, it tells me, okay, I leave that number, you can leave it. Well, my personal opinion, number in general is not so important and there are more important things in Excel. For example, the next to one, the difference between currency and amounting. We can discuss that later. I have no idea where there are two different, well, currency formatings and there are several um, differences between these two formats. I will show you. Here you see a list. Um, I used several currencies and the first column is always formatted in currency and the second one always with accounting. Uh, if I have a closer look uh, to the currency, either going to number to that small triangle, currency, here you have the whole list, or using control one, Control one is the key for um, format cells or right mouse click uh, format cells like that. <clears throat> you find a large list of currency and I think everybody had a look at it and found in the first half only the, the symbols, the abbreviation. Um, in the second part, uh, the international standard for all the languages. Microsoft does really good job. Uh, for example, in the year 2005 in Turkey, they changed from the Turkish Lira to the Yeni Türk Lirası. And in the next Excel version 2007, it was inside. So they are looking all the time, which currency in the world, in which country um, do we have? Uh, so that's the reason why you can find Bitcoin, quite funny. <laughs> but unfortunately, you don't have the abbreviation, the international form at BTC, um, maybe they forgot it. Until now, I don't have either uh, another internet um, currency that's not inside, maybe the next days, the next years. These are symbols, for example, dollar or ruble or whatever. Mm, I have no idea, we can discuss about that later. I have no idea why every currency in every country is displayed here. Dollar, also Euro, the Euro in Finland are the same than in France, than in Germany. And quite funny, you find, um, you find not only the Euro in Austria, Germany, Luxembourg, um, but also in Catalonia, <laughs> which is not a country. Let's have a look if there are Euro in Scotland, Scotland Euro. The next year they will leave uh, the United Kingdom that was my first and my last command on the Brexit. <laughs> I never do jokes about that. Now, um, I have no idea, maybe in the control panel, where it is, <laughs> I, did. I closed it. Maybe in the control panel, they have tables of countries and tables of currency and they linked it together. Uh, maybe that is the reason why you find dollar or peso or euro uh, so many times. It doesn't make sense, my personal opinion to use them. If you wonder, Switzerland, oh, Switzerland, uh, don't they have a known uh, symbol? By the way, do you know Switzerland? It's a very beautiful country in the center of Europe. Um, they have wonderful food, wonderful wine, wonderful cheese and chocolate, uh, great landscape, very nice people. They talk the same language as we do, but uh, that's the reason why we don't understand them. We're divided by the same language. I think you guys from Great Britain and Australia and Europe 
USA know that problem. Um, and they cannot afford a symbol for it. <laughs> That's the reason why they use um, Schweizer Franken CHF as symbol. We <laughs> using Euro or Great British Pound, we have a, a symbol. So here you see um, the currencies and accounting, and you see a small gap in currency, no, sorry, in accounting on the right side. Mm. You also have it here with the text, small space, small gap. You don't have it here in currency. Quite interesting, if you insert a zero, zero and format it with currency, it is displayed in currency 0, 0,00 but uh, with accounting, it's formatted with a bar with a hyphen. And also quite interesting, if I hide the zeros, you know that file options advanced going down to do not show the zero, here it is, okay. Only the currency is hidden, not the accounting. The accounting is displayed, I have no idea why. <laughs> going back, file options <clears throat> to advance to I'd like to see the zero values. Okay, and here they are. Here in Germany, we use normally red color and minus for negative values, um, and only currency can use the red color. If you change to accounting, you cannot change uh, the color. That's also a difference. And if you try to center um, the value, only uh, currencies can be centered, as you see here. If you try to center an accounting, nothing happens. It's left at the right side. Maybe because um, the currency unit is put on the left side and the value to the right side. I have no idea. <laughs> also, if you underline currency, only the number is underlined. In accounting, the whole cell is underlined. That's also different. And quite funny, quite interested, maybe a hint for errors. If you have a large text like here, you know that Romeo and so on, blah, blah, blah. If you have a lot of characters, a lot, I mean more than 254. If you format that text with currency, nothing happens. If you format that the same text to accounting, hashtags are displayed. The text is not shown. I found it quite interesting because I <laughs> always thought only numbers are shown with hashtags if they are too long. No, also text can be hidden with that hashtag if you make a mistake. So um, if you use the uh, formula repeat, repetition, um, more than, for example, uh, 255, let's change it to 250, I can see the X if I use more. It's hidden. Or if I try it once again, I'd like to repeat a text, for example, let's repeat Alan for about 80 times. You have a lot of Alans. Nobody needs so, so many Alans, so that's no problem. I just can format it, you see here in the preview, to accounting and Alan will disappear immediately. So these are the differences I found between currency and accounting. And as I told you, other calculation programs like, for example, OpenOffice, um, Google um, Numbers and so on, they only have one. I don't know why in Microsoft Excel you find two. Well, everybody of you knows that you have all of the currency units, but you don't have any other units. That's quite interesting because uh, you have in Excel the formula convert. I can convert, for example, 10. Uh, let's convert kilograms to um, how many pounds are they? <laughs> I'm always confused when I travel to the USA. What's your weight? I have no idea. <laughs> Average maybe. Um, I convert 10 from kilograms <clears throat> to pounds, 22. Here you see the same. Um, I calculate how many inch are uh, 10 centimeters. I convert uh, the inch to centimeters. And that's astonishing as you saw, convert once again, because here you have more than 100 units, but you don't find any unit inside the number formatting. Control one. You have to format them um, custom and as you know, either with zero or with hashtag. So let's start with a zero 
for example, a comma zero zero, starting with quotation marks, um, square meters, for example, kilogram, whatever, pound, liters, gallons. Okay, so I have um, this number converted to my custom format. Um, by the way, hashtag, <laughs> that's what the youngsters use. Um, we in Germany have a word for it. It's called fans for pigs or fans against pigs because if you have a lot of them, it's like a fans. Uh, the official name in German is a uh, number symbol, also in English. And I had a look at the internet. What is the official name uh, before hashtag? And the name is Octothorpe. I found it quite interesting. You have eight endings of this <laughs> symbol. So, but I think everybody understands hashtag, even if you're younger. If you have a longer number, for example, 1,400,000, typing like that, and you only want to display a 1,4 or 1.4 a million, um, you can change it also by custom formats. Going to custom formats starting uh, with hashtag and then I use my German a decimal separate a thousand separator point point and as you can see here um, the lead the following zeros are hidden pressing comma once again zero zero I'd like to display two um, digits after my comma I can add some text million euro or M euro or whatever. Okay. And quite interesting, Excel converts that to hashtag comma zero zero point point. You can use that. If you use other uh, thousand separator, you have to change. For example, Switzerland, you know Switzerland, they use um, one apostrophe two, three, four as thousand separator, not as we do uh, the point. Um, so that's how I formatted here uh, this money, Great British Pound. You see uh, 98 millions. I just display 99,00 million Great British Pound. That's the real uh, value inside and the formatted value you, you see. I'm sure everybody of you knows the formatting. If you click on custom, you have large lists. And in these lists, you find semicolon. This semicolon is a separator for positive and negative values. So you can use until three semicolon. The first part is reserved for the positive values. The next one is reserved for the negative one. The next is for zero and the rest is for text. So I can decide how uh, should positive or negative values be displayed. For example, 42. I'd like to see a positive value without digits after the comma. The negative should have some. So I could use, for example, zero. That means positive semicolon. Zero comma zero zero for the negative and me as German I use minus okay so if i change the value to minus 55 okay it is displayed with two values positive without who the hell does need that there are a lot of examples where you can use uh, this custom format for example i'd like to create such an h pyramid i'd like to show you how um, I did it. I found in the internet a free uh, paper of the Statistical Institute of Germany and they calculate according from 2009 to 2060 the population. The first row are the men, the second row are the women and the third is total. It means total. I'm not interested in total. So I'd like uh, to display from one year, I'd like to select uh, the row of the men and the row of the women. So let's go to the right. And therefore, I use a slicer, I use a bar, and I inserted it via developer, insert, I use that from the bottom here, that scroll bar. And in that scroll bar, design mode, 
I changed the properties. It starts minimum in the year 2009 and maximum 2060. That's the end of my list. Okay, the value of this scroll bar is written to the cell linked cell AB13. AB13. So let's close the design mode. If I change it here, this cell uh, is changed starting from 2009 till 2060. Here's the value. This value I used with a formula match match. I'm looking for that value in column A, starting from A13 to A168. Where are you? Please tell me in which row are you? So uh, the first year, 2009, is in row number one. Okay. Out of that row, I take all the information, first line, second line, from the men and women, male and female. Mm. I use the formula offset. Offset, please tell me starting from A12, um, how many rows we have to go down, these rows. Column, please calculate first, second, third column, and so on, and give me um, the value. Here are the male, the female I had to uh, format negative, female and not negative, um, because I'd like to see one bar to, from left to right, one from right to left. That's the reason why the first line is positive, the second one is negative. And if I insert a chart, insert chart, such a chart, let's enlarge it like that. I can close the gap while formatting that stuff. I don't see that. <laughs> I'd like to close the gap between, like that. And I'd like them overlap. They're not overlapping because one is to the left and the second to the right. I'd like to see uh, the value. Please show me the data label to the left, to the right data label. And unfortunately, the women <laughs> are negative. No, they shouldn't be negative. So no problem. I just format them number with the format positive, please stay zero. Or if you want to see the thousand uh, separator, hashtag point, hashtag, hashtag O. The negative, the same, but without minus, hashtag point, hashtag, hashtag O. I add it. And here we are. Now I can see the negative value positive because I'd like to have both values positive. Why do I have to do it? Because in charts, there's no way of using home, uh, the conditional formatting. And therefore I have to use, uh, well, my conditional formatting, my number formatting, that's the only possibility to format the numbers if you want to, if, it, if you need it, as you want to. And if you want to have a look what happens with Germany, oh my God, like that. Mm -hmm. Funny thing nice example. So that is uh, custom numbers. I have some more uh, examples. For example, here, this questionnaire. Uh, somebody asked me, may I get a large questionnaire? You see here, <laughs> number 14, that's really part of a very, very large one. I'd like to see X um, when you tell him true. But uh, if you delete it, uh, you should not use um, the key delete. I don't want to see any space here inside. I'd like to see uh, no information or whatever, clicking like that. So the text, no information is inside the cell, but it's not shown what to do. How did I do it? Um, I write a text. Everybody of you knows that you could format a text with a font color white. The problem if, is if I use a background, 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 <laughs> you see the text. And here I have backgrounds and maybe the background will change. So therefore I changed uh, the format, the number format. I'm not interested in number, 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 but I'm interested in text and I don't want to display the text. So that's the reason why I just press three semicolon. That means uh, don't show me the text and it vanishes. And that's what I did here. In these cells, I used home a conditional formatting. If the cell value equals that text, then please format it, edit rules, 
format. By the way, did you notice uh, now since some days uh, you can enlarge it? That's really great. I love it. <laughs> um, if the cell value equals uh, the text format, I use the number format as I showed before, three semicolon. And that's a reason why it is not shown independent from the background color. That's what I did here. So I can use inside the conditional formatting also my, um, well, conditional formatting of the number formats. I do it double and here it's necessary because that text should be displayed, the other text not. Another example. Here is the result of a large pivot table and some of these calculated value are very, very small, as you can see here or there. That's not very nice because uh, you cannot find out quite easy uh, which ones are um, positive, which, uh, which one are zero. So I use a formula, please round that value. Now this value is zero and I'm not interested in zero, I'd like to show these value as empty cells. So that's also the reason why I use custom format and don't use a third value because zero should not be displayed, only the positive and the negative value without any conditional formatting because I'm interested to see it like that. Well, I did it here again. Mm. Here I can choose between done or in progress. This cell is empty, going to done, going to progress. And instead of displaying the text, just the X or the hooks are displayed. What are X, what are hooks? Um, insert, if I insert the symbol, if I insert from wingdings, um, here is my no, here is my yes. Okay, close enter. I can format it uh, to a font I can read. Let's use this one. So you see uh, the characters which are behind uh, X and hook, <laughs> the, the umlaut and the French U uh, with accent circoflex. So uh, that's what I did inside. If um, the first text uh, is selected, then please use that text and format it with wingdings. Well, I formatted the whole column with wingdings. If not, use the other one. So let's have a look. Uh, conditional formatting. What did I do? Manage rules. If the cell value equals done, then I edit rule. Then I format cell value equals done. Format once again. Show me a U and format, use the color green and bold. I cannot change wingdings here, unfortunately. Maybe it has to do with uh, sharing Excel workbooks. Uh, maybe this font is not uh, on another computer. Unfortunately, you cannot do it. Uh, I had to um, format the whole column to wingdings. And that's how, how I did it, going from in progress to done, just uh, the hook or the X is shown. Well, um, three, um, three semicola, um, text is not displayed. Here I have another example. I'd like to show you the full example. It was a work some weeks ago. I started, it is that week, a large table for, it's about testing, a lot of tests. Mm and a lot of information, which company, which number, what do they do, which location, which organization, what can happen, who is responsible and so on, just fake dates. And they are interested also in date information, when do we plan, and they want to group, they want to see in which months, in which years, how many rows or how many cases, how many testings do we have. Well, that's... Um, that's a pivot table, but the problem is um, I don't know which version Excel is used in the companies, maybe Excel 2013, 16, 19. Uh, so therefore, and in pivot tables in these versions, they have different behavior for date. And therefore, because I do not know it, I extracted uh, the year and also the month out of this information. For example, here, January 2020. <clears throat> 
and I group the year and I group the month together uh, for to get a pivot table. I do it with a small wizard I created just here. For example, select the company, um, please show me the address of the company and please show me all the years and months here. And I do nothing more but creating a pivot table. And the problem is, I show you, <laughs> Not all the months normally would appear here inside. I have January, February, March, but in June, July, I don't have information and uh, creating pivot table, they wouldn't be displayed. They wouldn't be here. So therefore by VBA, by programming uh, at the bottom of, oops, sorry, <laughs> at the bottom of the list here, I write all the years, 2020, 2021, 2022, and all the months starting from 1 to 12, using the whole table for my pivot table, so I get all the months information, uh, and afterwards I delete these rows, because I don't need them, <laughs> they're not inside. But in the last column, all my months information are gathered, here in English, blank. And here you can see the number. I have one in this row, two in that row, one, <laughs> one again, here's nothing. And for to hide them, as you can imagine, here I have blue, here I have white. I use the number format, semicolon, semicolon, semicolon. No number, no text should be displayed. So that's just a small macro. Looking for the text um, blank, and the whole column is formatted with that number format. And that's what I did. No, no. <laughs> and that's what I did here. Uh, in German, if um, the header is leer, is blank, the whole uh, column is formatted uh, for to hide that column. Of course, I could also hide it, but I decided for not to show it. These semicola you can uh, use also for kind of conditional formatting. For example, equals, um, if a value equals one, please uh, format it uh, to year. Please format the text year. If it's not one, please use the text years. Thanks to Hannes for that example. So you see it here. <laughs> Better, I think you can better read it from there. Um, if I change that value, for example, to 12, I see 12 years, back to one, I have one year. So I can use several, well, conditions, <clears throat> can use a conditional formatting, and I'd like to show you some examples where and why to use it. First of all, here, once again, an example, red, green, yellow. If uh, the value is higher than 50, please format the cell with a font color red. If it's high, higher than 20, please use green, otherwise use yellow, as you see, see here. That's one example I programmed some, well, weeks, months ago for a company. Um, it's a bank, I'd like to show you the example. It was a horrible <laughs> example. They have more or less 200 files and the problem is every file is different. Uh, for example, here, let's take this example. Mm -hmm. Here I have to search the row, the column, where are you, and take from a specific row column the information outside. I started with Power Query but I found out that it's too difficult, there are too many cases inside. For example, some of the files, I find the information on different worksheets here, for example. Sometimes um, all the, the employees, all the salespersons are in different rows and so on. So I decided to use VBA and to create mm, a small wizard. I'd like to show you. Enable a small wizard. He takes all of the information out of the total, out of the whole bank and from the two villages. And for every employee, um, I create three columns, mm. as many employees I do have. And in the last one, as you saw here, I don't run it. <laughs> and in the last one, they wanted uh, to have displayed um, values higher than 100 
percent higher than one in color green and lower than uh, 100 percent in color uh, red of course i could have used uh, via vba the conditional formatting but one disadvantage is um, i have to write several lines for that and the second disadvantage is um, it makes my Excel workbook very slow. If you have a lot of different uh, conditional formatting, uh, it's a question of velocity and it's not the fastest one. So therefore, I decided just to use the column, the custom formatting. If you're smaller than one, please use red. If you're larger than uh, one, use color 10. What is that? Not green, color 10. Um, Problem is they first uh, wanted to have it uh, green, but I decided, no, sorry, green is so horrible. Did you see green? That is green, <laughs> very froggy. Um, let's use another color for it. And just with a small macro, everybody of you will understand. You can find out which color means which um, which uh, number means which color. Uh, that's my macro of every cell in the used range here will be formatted. The number format of this cell is the text color and the value inside of the color. So let's run it. That's a macro behind. I don't show you. You have to believe it to run. And these are the 56 um, colors behind and I asked them which red, which green should we use and they decided to take number 10. That's okay. <laughs> and that's what I did insert. It's only one command in VBA, number format equals and so on. And it's much faster than using conditional formatting in VBA. Another problem, um, you have to use the conditional formatting, um, not that one, uh, but my conditional formatting, my number format, if you use charts, as I mentioned before. Here I have an example, a list of articles, a list of values of prices. They are sorted by a formula. Um, these are random numbers. I can hmm, calculate them, recalculate once again. These are sorted values and I'd like to display the text and I'd like to know the percentage. Please divide the value um, by the sum. Please sum them, accumulate that because I'd like to know um, which value is or until which value you have a value uh, lower than 80%, which is between 80 and 95%, and which is higher than 95%. So there are three bars inside that chart. Uh, one bar you see here, the other two are hidden because it's nothing, it's zero. And I'd like to display the number, once again, calculate now. You see the color must change and therefore I used, of course, right mouse click, form a data label, the number format, you know, using blue, he knows English, <laughs> using blue, um, blue if it is uh, lower than 80%, red if it's uh, between uh, 80 and 95 and larger use green. That's what I did here. So if you have the problem to use colors, different colors or conditional formatting, you have to use that number format. So just have a look uh, for that, how it works. Well, that's um, number formatting. Last examples, unfortunately, believe me, I don't show it. <laughs> unfortunately, you only have three semicolon. You only have four ways of formatting. Sometimes I need more and that's what I cannot do with my number formats. Here you see an example, once again, a chart. I got a list of texts. This means low, middle, high, very high, extremely high, extra high, whatever. And they wanted to display the text in a chart, which is not possible because charts needs number. So I have to convert these text to numbers by replacing text to numbers. And internally, these are just numbers, as you see. I calculate the numbers because I can use these numbers in my chart. But I'd like to see in 
in the chart and also in the table text. And I started with my number formatted, but I failed <laughs> I, because I only have four uh, possibilities to form. And that was the solution out there. I used my conditional formatting. If the cell value is greater or equals 2000, then format it with that text. If it is greater, please use that text. Mm, what did I do? I used the number format, just show me the text. And therefore I could not use directly my custom format. What a pity. Well, talking about date, I think date is also very important. I think everybody of you knows um, the key of date for today is control semicolon. Be careful on my German keyboard, it's control point, control semicolon. If I type a date, um, I always use the right blocks of numbers. And for typing the date, I can type it as a ninth, either minus March of 21, or I can type nine divided by three by 21, and it's converted uh, to a date. That's quite funny. So I don't have to use the point on the other side of my keyboard. A date is nothing more than a number. I can convert it to a number. I think everybody knows starting from 1900 and every um, date insert, every real date has a following number, a serial number. And that's a reason if I type, for example, 31st of April of this year, he tells me, sorry, I don't find a number. Um, that's not a date. If I have a real date, for example, today, I can format it. I can format it. Date, I have some information here. I can display um, the month name or the weekday name. Let's use like that, for example, March. Quite interesting, maybe you notice that you can change all the lo location. Quite funny, you have German in Austria and Germany and in Switzerland. And in Austria, the first month, it's uh, they use another word. They don't use Januar, but Jena. Uh, so there, that's the reason why we have uh, several Germans here inside. And that's how I formatted the table here. You just see some date information. These date information are here, starting from the first date of today. And I did nothing more but format that to German, that to English. As you see here, that to Dutch, Swedish, you know, Swedish, Italian, Portuguese, you find it here, um, languages like Turkey. And on the next page, uh, quite interesting, you also could use other um, languages, for example, Bulgarian or Russian, in Variar, Febral, Mart, April. If you change it, although the font is changed to Greece, to Russian, to Cyrillic, also Arabic, and quite funny, in Arabic in several countries, you have uh, several calendars you can use. They calculate the date um, from our Gregorian calendar, year 2021, to their calendar. For some of these re uh, regions of these uh, countries, it's possible to change it. So, when I saw that uh, some years ago, the first time, I asked myself, well, why cannot do it uh, dynamically? Of course you can. Uh, for example, if I use all the languages with the code, I can change um, the date. So once again, mm, this is today. If I format the date of today, for example, uh, German, let's use that one. And if I have a, uh, no, sorry, once again, <laughs> date, okay. If I have a closer look to custom, I find, that's what I've wanted to find. I find the code um, brackets dollar minus language minus country. And then uh, day, month, year. Be careful, I'm in Germany, I use year, <laughs> the German way of writing, not the English one. You have to change it to uh, day, month, year, or other language, dia, mes, año. Um, and that's what I did here, using a drop down with a data validation, using that languages. Um, looking match in which row are you? 
and getting with index uh, the code of that language and combining that with the date of today with the formula text today I combine the text dollar minus and then the code out of here with the formatting day, month, year. And that's how I can change from that language, I don't know, to Danish, for example, to Bulgarian. Where's Bulgarian? Here from Bulgaria. <laughs> here it's shown or whatever to check to all the languages you have just by a formula using the internal information of formatting dates. And that's how you can create a calendar. For example, here, do you know Czech? Horrible language, I tell you. <laughs> Maybe they are not human beings because uh, this month they pronounce Bjesen. I cannot do it. <laughs> I live in <laughs> Also very horrible. Let's change it to another language. For example, my nice German, I understand. And whatever, English, Spanish, you can Spanish. Enero, Febrero, Marzo. Um, I do the same, just looking, we look up or index match for the language and combining our language with the formula text. Please show me only the month information or here, please show me the day information, the weekdays. And that's how I can create an international calendar without mm, any programming just with formulas. Well, that's about date. My personal, well, point is I don't, I'm not very interested in time, but I'd like to mention it because as we saw before, time is between zero o'clock and uh, 9,000 hours or a clock. And the problem in Excel is after 23 hours, which is the next 24 hours, 25 hours or one o'clock in the morning. How do we calculate? Are these hours or um, is that a time information? And that produces a several problem. First problem, Excel starts at, well, midnight. So if you have negative value, I'd like to calculate and minus beginning here for sleepy and minus beginning, it would result a negative value. And therefore, I used uh, the if clause if he starts after the beginning, if begin is greater than end, if begin is lower than end, I start with that, please calculate normally and minus beginning. Otherwise, please calculate starting from beginning till midnight, one day, 24 hours, plus the hour in the morning. That's what I did here. Please do not change uh, to the beginning of 1904. I read it several times in the internet. That's horrible because every date value in your workbook will be shifted for four years. And if you copy worksheets to other workbooks, you will get a lot of problems. So try to use uh, only these positive time values like I did here. By the way, if you type a uh, 23 double point, I have to use my keyboard on the left side. No, that's not necessary. You can change, for example, comma, comma, I never use comma, comma <laughs> uh, in Excel. You can change comma, comma with file options, with the proofing, with the autocorrect options. Please could you replace comma, comma with double point. And if you want to type, if you have a lot of time information, for example, now we have, oops, very late, uh, 20 comma comma 05. You see what happens? You can type it with one hand and uh, hold your um, glass of beer in the other hand, like that. Um, that's just a trick. If you want to sum these uh, numbers home, going to auto sum. Sorry, not that. Interested. Once again, some, he does not recognize uh, these time information as values. That's quite interesting. He that does not find the number behind them. So by force, you have to select them. That's one very strange thing in Excel. Okay. And the problem is um, he thinks or he starts, well, after 24 o'clock, I start once again with one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. No, I have to format 
this well mistake from time uh, using that symbol 33 okay and then it works correctly because internally I use that simple bracket hour bracket which means more than 24 hours please do not start again at one o'clock by the way I told you that I'm collecting bucks and there's one time buck um, inside I'd like to show you 10 seconds if I have some time information for example uh, five hours and 20 minutes four hours uh, also 20 minutes, six hours, 45 minutes, high noon and uh, 14.05, whatever. I'm only interested in the minutes. So I could format custom that to please show me only MM, which means minutes, okay? It works internally. The time value is inside and only the minutes are shown. I save that save it let's go to here it's my folder let's call it double m okay save it i close it i reopen this file again and what happens you see that <laughs> excel changed my number format from smaller m to larger m which means months and that's wrong I have no idea how to avoid that. <laughs> I found it several times in internet and a colleague asked me, uh, sorry, <laughs> I have no idea for that. So that's one of the buck. Uh, well, that's time. I think that's almost everything I wanted to tell about time. I have two or three more points, then I will stop. Text, text. Here you see James Bond. Unfortunately, last year we couldn't see a movie of James Bond. They wanted to show it this year. We are still waiting. We are so fascinated about James Bond and his weapons and cars and so on. Well, every man and a lot of women love them. And I'd like to see um, kind of bullets before the text, what to do. Everybody of you know uh, 007, the O will be deleted. Either you press apostrophe 007 or you format the cell to text and then type inside 007. Then you have text. If you do the second one, go into a number formats, clicking on custom, you find the information for text is the at symbol. And that's what I can use. For example, here the producer, I'd like to have a bar, a bullet point before, so I just can format it. Please show me minus and the space, for example, and then show me the text because I'd like to see the text. Okay. And that's how I can create uh, this bullet points inside. And what I did I do here, I can only have one, um, <laughs> one font inside the text. If you're old enough like me, you know ASCII, I think American Standard Code for International Interchange, something like that. And if you're old, as old as me, you know, for example, A has the ASCII code uh, 65. <laughs> and sometimes I use it still until today, nobody needs it normally. For example, if I uh, write in Spanish, España, uh, I type ALT 164 on the right block of my keyboard I have to use it here alt pressing alt 164 if you only need one or two of these um, characters it's easier to type like that ASCII code starts at number 32 and if you press alt and the number lower than 32 you have non-printable characters for example alt 1 alt 2 alt 3 4 5 once again 6 7, 10, 11, oh, male and female. And once again, let's do it here, uh, 14. Oh, that's fun. That's uh, what we could use for the composer. Um, selecting that column, going to number formats, to custom, and then I press Alt and the number 14, space add for to use it. And for to get a small indent inside, I can format it with the alignment using indent, left indent, for example, two characters. That's a lot. 
like that. And I could save that uh, style with a number. I did it here uh, with James Bond. Find it here, Bond or Bond actor. <laughs> That's what I did inside. So if you need it, or for example, here also in um, your description of the worksheet, pressing Alt 14 or Alt 1, you get some smileys. <laughs> That's quite funny. Not funny, I'm very serious. I'm talking about the next point. <laughs> Listen careful, that's one of the last points. Um, maybe you know that problems, not human beings, but machines. We have a large machine in Germany, which is called SAP. It's a large database. Although other databases sometimes produces um, this error, this mistake. I select these numbers looking on my status bar and find, oh, he cannot sum. Why not? It's general. If I change it to number, nothing happened. He cannot sum. These are not values. There is text under it. There's text behind the cells. And I want to get rid of the text because I'd like to sum, for example, this column. So one solution, if you write 007, if you have uh, these uh, green triangles, you normally get it with file options. Uh, where is it? Proofing. No, sorry. Uh, where is it? Formula? Formula is it. Enable background error checkings. You have it. If you have luck, you could change it. You could convert it to a number. Here, in that case, I cannot convert it to a number. Either I can convert it with double click, enter, double click, enter, double click, enter. Colleague, could you please come and help me? And now I select these three cells and now these are number inside. That's stupid. You won't do it for thousands of values you get every week. Another way of uh, changing it, of converting is, is multiplying then times one. This is a number. You can drag it down. As you can see here, I can copy it and pasting special as value. And now I have the value. The same you can do it with the formula value. It's converted to value or some of you use minus minus double minus. Okay. It also converts that to a real number. Drag it down and the, then you have everything. I think a better way is writing number one somewhere copying that cell and selecting the whole uh, column and pasting special. I'd only like to multiply number one with the value inside and please leave the values. Okay. And then as you can see here in the status bar, then their value. My recommendation is the following. My tip, my advice, use the wizard data text to columns. I separate these strange things with a delimiter next. Well, there is no delimiter inside. I just use anything, any strange delimiter. For example, tap, next, finish. And what happens? Every value is rewritten to the cell. And then I have value inside, as you can see here. So it's converted. So once again, um, I select the whole column. I use my wither text to columns, next, finish. And here we are. Uh, I think that's the fastest way uh, for to convert this strange text stuff. Some of you know that. I'd like to show how that happens. Mm, just give me five minutes more <laughs> and I finish. Uh, how that happens, how uh, 7,5 is displayed as text here inside. It's because of programming. I'd like to uh, write a small macro. So please convert. Um, number to value. I declare a variable as a string and I put inside an input box, a small window in put box. Please tell me a number. Not very polite. That's we Germans are. Um, the active cell should get the value should get the value of my variable s. What happens? I'm here in that empty cell. Uh, going back to developer to Visual Basic. Starting F8, F8, F8. Tell me a number, for example, 17,5. Okay. 
And now the value is inside, but it's not 70,5, but text 70,5. F8, F8, and now the value you see, even though it's formatted as general or number, um, the text is behind or is beyond that value. That's the reason what, dat what some databases sometimes do. Um, it's very bad, <laughs> but I showed you some solutions. Well, two more, <clears throat> very fast. One is percentage. I have percentage. Um, sometimes I'm very astonished when I see people, when I see our wet in Germany is 19% and they don't type 19%, but they type 0, 0,19, enter, going back to the cell and format it with that symbol. And I asked them, uh, excuse me, why don't you type, for example, Austria 20% or we have also 7%, whatever. Oh, really? That can I do? <laughs> but excuse me, why do we have, do we have that uh, symbol here? It's such a large symbol. Where do we use it? And the answer is you use it, for example, um, if you want to see the percentage of that value divided by the sum. Therefore, you have to format it. If I just calculate equals, tell me the number divided by whole area, okay? If I click on percentage, oh, zero percent. <laughs> by the way, uh, do you know the difference? That symbol does not display digits after comma if you use uh, it out of here, out of the box, out of the drop box percentage, you have to digits. Of course, you could increase the number of digits also. So that's the reason why you have to use the percentage uh, format. By the way, another bug of Excel, here you have the formula. If you click on sum, if you use sum, here is sum, Excel uses the formula subtotal. And subtotal has two different values, either 9 and 109. 9 is used, I just copy it, copy, go in here, paste. 9 is used only for filtering, 109 is used for filtering or for hiding the rows. But let's filter it, for example, country, Russia is a very large country, so let's show it without Russia, okay. So as you saw here, both are changed with the parameter 9 and the parameter 109. Okay, I understand. If I go back and hide one row, hide it, uh, you see 960, 940, you see the difference between 9. 9 sums all the values. Um, 109 sums only the visible values, but if I do both, if I hide a row and filter, and that's the bug of Excel, for example, let's filter Sweden without Sweden, you get the same result. <laughs> and that shouldn't be, there should be different result because I filter and hide and now it doesn't work properly. <laughs> Very strange. Uh, sorry guys, doesn't work. Well, and my last comments, and then I really stop. <laughs> you know, um, scientific numbers, if I have a large number, as I did before, it's converting to scientific uh, way of writing. I could do it by hand, for example, writing E125, okay, and it works, it's a number. But what happens if you have a um, Word document or document from the internet <clears throat> like that with, for example, gene information where E is inside? I select all, control A, I copy all. I paste it here to Excel, for example, there. Just paste it. And what happens to that gene information? Uh, they're recalculated to the Excel way of thinking. And some months ago, I find it in the internet, there are some articles that scientifics uh, rename human genes due to Excel, due to that, well, not problem of Excel. <laughs> I find it quite interesting that Excel is um, more mighty than scientifics. So uh, they <laughs> tell, okay, we have to change it in our system. Otherwise, we cannot work with Excel. 
that's it. I hope I, you got uh, some information you did not know. Mm, I hope you had a little bit fun watching me, listening to me. I hope it wasn't so boring. I hope you got some ideas where to need, uh, why these number formats, these small things are quite important. For example, in charts, you can use them also in conditional formatting. Uh, it will produce some problems as you can see here and I gave you some solutions what to do, where you can solve. So thanks. Thanks, Renee. Thank you, Renee. This was great. <laughs> A little bit too long. <laughs> no, it's fine, buddy. No worries. No worries. Everybody's asleep. <laughs> so, no, no, we still got. <laughs> Are they here? The That's here. <laughs> we uh we, we hit our hit our max at the start, so a few people had to go over to YouTube yeah. and, <laughs> and catch it there. We couldn't go over a hundred for some reason. We'll have to we're gonna look into that. Yeah, it locked the door on some people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see the chat, Rene, but lots of you know kind of thank yous and stuff are coming through that you might want to look at. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of information. Uh, I warned people that they, they might learn a thing or two. <laughs> uh, who has questions? Who wanted to ask oh, something? Yes, I have a question, please. <laughs> Mr. Martin, I have a question. <laughs> Tell me, Rene. Rene. Rene, okay. The question <laughs> is, um, you've covered many, many subjects, um, actually number formatting. Yeah. And you didn't cover the, the, the subject of uh, fractions in Excel. Fractions. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this um, is quite. This is a very interesting uh, subject, especially for me, as I teach also mathematics. Okay. Uh, and you can do uh, uh, many calculations, all, all kinds of, of uh, all the all the uh, uh, addition, subtraction, etc., with the fractions. But my question is this: For example, if you write the, the fraction two, the denominator is the numerator is two, and the, the denominator is four. Two on four, two fourths. Excel changes it automatically into half, one over two. Is there a way in which you can leave the original fraction as is? Mm. Do you understand the question? Yeah. First of all, I think you're the first person who uses that <laughs> number formatting. <laughs> and you're right, that's not the only one. I missed uh, two or three things. For example, the underline, I did not mention. There are more the than I Questions are very, use yeah. very useful. Okay. Mm. And, and, <laughs> I very, never... and very much in use. Mm -hmm. Very much in use. I'd, may I share it again? Once again, my screen. So everybody, just a second. That's it. Here is space. So you write what's uh, what do you write in one divided? For example, I write two. No, I want to write two fourths. Two over four. Mm -hmm. Excel changes. No, the, <laughs> sorry, that's changes my. Changes a fraction. Yeah. Okay. Um, for example, twenty-four over forty-eight because that's not a date. Um. Equal sign. Equal sign, yes. <laughs> yeah. You see, it changes to, to, to but can you, when you go to fractions in the, in the number formatting, choose any one. Mm -hmm. You see, it, it, it didn't keep the original fraction, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. changes it to one, mm -hmm. one over two. Can you keep, is there any way in which you can keep the original fraction? <laughs> well, Excel is right. <laughs> 24. No, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about Excel, the, the, the Excel being right or wrong. I just want to keep the original <laughs> yeah, fraction. Is it mean. possible to do it in Excel? It might have to be text format. Yes, uh, text yeah. for is, 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 uh, is a good uh, But you want to method. keep, uh, yeah. once again, equals 12, 12 uh, 24. Mm -hmm. And change want... it back to fraction and then you get half mm. one over two you don't get the original fraction yeah yeah, yeah. yeah just automatically so you're calculating it. Uh, when you're doing that you're basically calculating it so engine is uh, trying to divide that uh, option of course we understand the logic behind it because mm -hmm. excel always calculates the half mm -hmm. right half one over two but if you want to to keep the original fraction then uh. there's no method there's no way 
I don't know. I don't have a solution. Now you have, you I, have a challenge, Mr. Ray. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will please, publish please it on my blog. Please Excel is narrowing. Uh, yes, please, please find a solution for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. It's been an excellent lecture. Very, very good one. Thank you. That would be a, a BBA thing. <laughs> I mean, I, you're, you're quite correct there that it does change it back to the lowest common denominator. Yes. And that's the problem. It's, a, it's, a, it's within Excel itself. Yes. Reduced to the lowest common denominator. And 24 slash 48 is going to you know, reduce to 1 slash 2. Okay. So I'm afraid there is no way of changing that. Okay, thank you, Roger. You're more than welcome, man. I good to see you. Bye -bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Interesting stuff, eh? Um, yeah, I don't think that'll help. Um, any other questions, guys? Any questions for Renee? I think there was one from Wasim asking, my question is, are there any di difference in using uppercase letters in date formats versus lowercase letters? Yes, there is. Um, for example, months. The only example I know is months. Uh, with uppercase, you write, uh, well, uppercase M and um, lowercase means minutes. Mm -hmm. And be careful if you use other languages, for example, Turkish, Gün Ay Yil. You have to use other, um, well, other characters for day, month, year, for example, hours, seconds. So. Thank you. Just reading through some of your, your comments, Rene, people have sent me. Pardon? I didn't Just get reading it. through some of the comments in the chat. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was nice to see. Excellent. Any other questions, guys? Alan, if I can just chip back in a moment for Menai's question. Sure. I, I just tried out myself. Um, yeah. Excel does reduce everything to the lowest common denominator. That's, that's a straightforward fact. But if you typed equals formula text, the cell where you've written equals 24 slash 48, you will see 24 slash 48 returned. So formula text will give you the underlying value, but Excel itself always has to reduce to LCD. But yes, but formula text is only text. You cannot do calculations with formula text. <laughs> sure, sure. But, you know, if you want <laughs> to display it, so all you can do is equals formula text alongside, and that will yes. actually show you what you had there originally. But um, I can't offer you any other solution than that, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps anyway. you could then do um, text formatting to remove the words formula text. <laughs> you could do. <laughs> <laughs> That would be that would be a really cool way to get around this. <laughs> workarounds and workarounds. Okay, thank you very much. Oh. So I ask you something, uh, a question we got here in Germany. Uh, as I showed, you have a lot of calendars, a lot of different calendars from different regions, religions, countries and so on. Um, but you don't have formulas for calendars. For example, I'm missing um, the formula for Eastern, Easter Sunday, because a lot of holidays in Germany are calculate on Eastern, for example, Pentecost and so on. So therefore, if you want to create a calendar, uh, uh, with the holidays, with vacations, you need uh, a Eastern formula. Of course, you find it in the internet. It's a large formula. Uh, does anybody of you have an idea why Microsoft did not insert Eastern? We discussed about political correctness. Well, but as I showed you, there are calendars from other <laughs> cultures. I, th I think one of the problems with Easter and a lot of the Muslim calendars is that it's actually not based on dates, but on a full moon. 
Yeah, and? <laughs> and and therefore you have to know when the full moons are. So you'd have to have an, a whole a whole almanac in the um, in a data table somewhere as well. But out of the year, for example, 2021, you can calculate uh, the date of e of Eastern, of Sunday of Eastern. Uh, well, as I told you, a lot formula. <laughs> Mr. Gauss did it <laughs> 200 years ago, and mm -hmm. it's valid for more than two or three uh, hundred years. Uh, so it, uh, Microsoft could insert this formula. For example, Open Office has a formula <laughs> like that. Does it? Yeah. You also have no idea. Cool. I'm just replying to something on there, YouTube. And the next question we also discussed, do you have any idea why you have currency symbols in for all the different ah. countries? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, even countries like Catalonia, Catalonia, which is not a country. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it confuses persons, really. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I was talking to the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Now, Rene, I guess they're trying to make it easier for people, I guess. But uh, yeah, <laughs> just makes that list even bigger. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My lights are doing it. Uh, Danke, Tanya. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Might close down the YouTube stream if we're all happy. Zoom will carry on if people have anything else. Thanks, Ilka. I'm also going to add the link to all the upcoming events in case okay. people want to. Yeah, go. Yeah, thank you. RSVP.